Hi everybody, I'm back with a series of videos. It's been a while since I posted anything on the site. Uh, I was uh, been quite busy over the past few years. I moved across the country, took on a new uh, position uh, at my work and, and so forth. And uh, just didn't didn't tackle any projects in that period of time that I you know I felt was worth um, uh, filming and posting. And uh, over the last year with the pandemic situation, gave me an opportunity to look for something different to do. So I found uh, a project um, that I had had been considering doing for some time, which was uh, to build a set of Klipsch La Scala clones. I had owned a pair of, of uh, La Scalas a few years back and really, really liked them, but I had to sell them, um, unfortunately, because the the house that I was living in at the time, I just didn't have room and they were just sitting in, in the basement not being used. Uh, which was which was a shame. So uh, I sold them. The new house I live in has plenty of room for uh, something of that size. And so uh, at first I was trying to buy something, trying to find something. But the place that I live, it's a fairly small area. I just haven't been able to track it, uh, track down a pair. Uh, and I just didn't want to spend 15 grand for a new pair. So um, I decided I would bite the bullet and take on a build project. Uh, it is based on what I'm building is based on um, late 1970s era, probably into the 80s era La Scala cabinet. Um, I got I found plans online on a couple of different forums and so on, and uh, pieced together information from you know from a few other sources. And I am pretty confident what I'm going to build here is uh, is very very close, if not uh, you know in, you know entirely perfectly accurate to um, to the uh, the scala models that would have been built around that time frame uh, all the drivers uh, are different drivers are um, are uh, all obtained from Christ speakers in Russellville Arkansas um, more modern versions of um, you know comparable comparable drivers um, superior probably in some in some respects to um, what certainly what would have been available at that um, time when when uh, uh, those models were coming out from the factory and so on and a uh, bit of a surprise um, uh, in the crossover area um, that, that'll be kind of the crown jewel of the project so uh, looking forward to showing you that uh, a couple of disclaimers uh, up front uh, on this thing this is for my use um, only this whole project so I decided to document it um, it's not for any commercial application or any, or anything like that uh, it is, um, like I said, for my use and my home use only. That's it. Uh, second disclaimer, I'm not a carpenter. Um, I have um, picked up a few skills over the years, um, which I've put to use in this project. And uh, I think it'll come out well, but, but I'm certainly not a carpenter. So if you see me doing things that are... Um, uh, obviously better ways to do them if you're a carpenter um, <laughs> feel free to comment uh, but uh, I did the best I could with, with what I had uh, I think uh, I think I've done all right at the end so uh, so that's it and uh, and again finally anything that I've shared uh, anything that I share in here information so on is information that I've obtained um, in public domain this is this is nothing that I've um, um, you know, gotten anywhere else but that and some of the materials in here I've put together myself and uh, just from again just just information that I've, I've gathered and put together um, um, prior to you know in, in terms of planning for this project. So um, hopefully um, you enjoy. Um, I've not seen really a great documentation of, of this type of a project before uh, so hopefully you enjoy it. If you're interested uh, please subscribe. Uh, ring the bell so you uh, get my future posts. This will take a few videos for sure. And it's uh, fairly detailed, so it might not be the most exciting, but I think if you're interested in, in sort of learning how this thing goes together, um, hope, you know, I, I think you'll, you'll, uh, you'll pick up a few tips from it. So, uh, so um, thanks for subscribing and uh, watching, and, uh, and I hope you enjoy. And uh, sorry, one other... Um, quick note on this one um, unfortunately I, I apologize in advance for the orientation of the video um, some of the early pieces that I shot with this wasn't really thinking about it and I and I shot it on the the vertical 
here with the uh, with my uh, iPhone and um, obviously I would have I would have rather done it the other way but anyways I did it that way so I've kept the video more or less um, in this vertical uh, frame so uh, I apologize for that but um, hey turn your iPad the other way and and you know I think it'll it'll be fine but um, but apologies in advance for um, for that the material I'm using for this is uh, is uh, birch plywood and uh, it's uh, a lot of the original ones from the factory were done in what they call raw birch um, this stuff's birch but quite honestly it's it's pretty nice looking stuff. Um, there's uh, the veneer on this is actually a little different than any uh, birch, quite honestly, that I've ever seen in the past. Uh, and it looks really nice. You can see some good, uh, nice grain in there. And uh, I'm hoping that when I'm done with this, it'll stain up really, uh, really nicely. So uh, fingers crossed. Okay, so I'll share with you my first, uh, my first cheat. Um, as you can see here, I've got uh, all my materials cut here and uh, neatly, neatly piled. Uh, I did not tackle this cutting myself. And um, the simple reason for it is I wasn't uh, confident that I could, even though the cuts are not complex, I wasn't confident that my uh, own uh, table saw setup and things like that here was gonna give me the level of accuracy that I wanted uh, in making these cuts. Uh, as I said, there's nothing pretty, there's nothing very complicated about these as such. Uh, anybody can do them, they're all, mostly all rectangles. Um, there are a couple of complicated cuts when we get into the, um, the, the base horn build, um, which I'll show you later on, but uh, they could be done uh, at home. So if you're uh, handy with a table saw and you've got decent tools, you can absolutely do this yourself. Uh, I did uh, outsource the cutting um, to, a local, um, to a local cabinet maker who did most of this on a CNC uh, cutter obviously it added a little bit of expense to my project here, but um, But it's still going to come in. I think really uh, well under budget compared to um, You know compared to what you'd be paying for a new set these days and even quite frankly used sets are starting to really climb in in price So I think it was an investment uh, worth it uh, worthwhile for me And uh, if you're doing this is certainly something that you could consider Assuming you can actually find somebody who'd be willing to take this on for you. Anyways, uh, everything's cut here, ready to go. And so we'll proceed to the next step. Okay, now we're ready for what is the most important part of the build. And also the most difficult, which is uh, constructing the doghouse section. And um, the hard part of this, obviously, was the cutting, um, you know, getting those 60 degree uh, angles on each piece um, but also the assembly portion is going to be quite difficult so what i have done is i've constructed i guess a, a frame or a jig or whatever you want to call it um, to assist in putting this uh, these pieces together and so there's nothing particularly complicated about uh, about the design of this uh, thing and it, I, I can't take credit for it it's um um, it's based on a design that I saw on one of the Klipsch forums uh, that I've read sometime in the past uh, and I haven't built it exactly the same way but I've, I've, uh, I've taken the idea uh, and tried to put it into practice and so what it is um, I think is fairly, fairly evident that you can see it's basically a frame um, constructed to put the uh, chamber wall uh, pieces in to hold them in place and hold um, the angle uh, in place while um, the section is glued and and or nailed uh, if you choose to do that and, and I will be I'll explain why in a little bit and then what I've done sorry I've, I've um, created another section uh, right here which is basically made from the cutouts um, that can can go in here and be used as a as a clamp uh, to hold everything in place uh, while I'm while I'm doing the assembly, and um, hopefully if I do this uh, if I do this right, um, I should get a fairly good um, join at the uh, you know at the the sharp end uh, of the doghouse, and uh, hopefully this this will work. Um, I don't have plans per se for this for this device, but uh, basically what it is is um, 
you can see that these pieces are cut on 60 degree angles to match um, the shape of the doghouse roof. And uh, in the bottom here, I've basically just, just cut um, a hole down there so that the tip uh, is actually free and clear and not resting up against anything for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, it'll need to be adjusted a little bit once we put it into the, into the, uh, the jig here. And uh, as you're gluing it, of course, if, it's, uh, if it were tight down in, in a V there, the glue is gonna end up running out and, and sticking on to the, to the jig itself, which we don't want. Um, so basically this is what it is. Now, I will tell you that this didn't work out as uh, perfectly as I'd hope. It's quite, it's quite difficult to get um, these cuts exactly right and then you know to match perfectly with, with how the doghouse matches together. And so I was a little troubled by that in the beginning. And what you can see here, I'll try to show it to you a little closer. You'll see that there's a little bit of room here, a little bit of space um, in, between, uh, in between these these notches. And some of that's because I sanded it down. But I thought about it afterwards, and actually this is probably a good thing. So what I've elected to do here is actually just to use... Um, uh, just to, to um, uh, use use some uh, some shims uh, once once the once the uh, piece gets in there, I can actually move it a little bit, which turns out I think to be an advantage um, because I can adjust it to make sure you know to get the, the the point as close together as possible or the peak of the the doghouse roof, and I can use shims once again in place to hold it clamp it down and I think this is actually probably going to be um, a better setup than if I had just gotten gotten everything 100% you know perfectly in the first place it just it's really really hard to get these cuts exactly um, exactly right <clears throat> excuse me and uh, I think the shims actually uh, will be a blessing in disguise for for uh, um, for this section okay so what I've done here um, to get to get ready is I've taken uh, a couple of doghouse, um, the doghouse roof pieces, the angled pieces, and I've put them together. I got a, a pair that matched up fairly well, and uh, uh, I've I've uh, put them down, um, you know, in the way that they're going to be folded uh, back, uh, point to point, and I've just put some painters tape here, um, which hopefully will hold it uh, in place, and I'll flip it uh, over. And glue the uh, uh, glue the inside of those uh, joints, and uh, hopefully that'll allow me to pick it up, keep everything uh, nice and tight together, while I put it in uh, into the jig. And uh, once I do that, I should be able to uh, get everything in place, uh, shim it up till it's everything's nice and snug, clamp it down, and uh, and then we'll see what we've got. And uh, I'm more than likely going to put. Um, Put some uh, nails into this thing to hold it at least, uh, at least at the uh, top center and end, and perhaps uh, perhaps a little more than that, um, depending on how it looks. Uh, I don't think they'll be particularly visible. Obviously, we'll need to use a little bit of wood filler to fill those um, indentations if uh, if I nail it. But I'm just not I'm not confident um, enough in the glue alone to hold this. I mean, this is. Uh, essentially the most important piece of uh, of the base section of the of the La Scala and uh, I just want to make sure it's going to um, it's going to hold up um, under all the various um, you know pressures and things like that that it's going to be subjected to okay so you can see here what I've done uh, I've got the pieces in there uh, I flipped to glued them and uh, folded them into the into the jig and uh, align them uh, as best I could using uh, using shims uh, here on the side just to get the angle uh, as close to uh, as close to perfect as I could. Um, I know it isn't perfect, but uh, it's uh, it should it should be sufficient. And uh, you can see again on this side. Uh, you know, I've had to shim it, uh, shim it up to get the appropriate angle and, and so forth. Uh, then I've got my, uh, my clamp in here, clamp them uh, on the ends. 
And I don't know how well you'll be able to see any of this, but um, um, you can see that I've uh, put some, uh, used my air nailer to put in some inch and a quarter finishing nails in here to hold it. Um, I spaced it out so that uh, given this angle, one inch from the tip, I basically drew a little very faint um, pencil line the whole way across and one inch in with an inch and a quarter finishing nail um, is, is about perfect. It won't, uh, it goes through about uh, 80, 85% of the way, uh, but won't blow through the other side. And it's in a really, you know, solid part of the, um, of the join. So it should hold real well. Um, I just did uh, four on one side and four on the other side, just offsetting um, so that we've got, uh, we've got nails on, uh, on both sides, just holding everything together. And as you can see, they're pretty, you know, it's gonna leave a pretty small um, hole to fill there. Um, the originals, quite frankly, from the factory are made this way as well. And uh, so, uh, um, you know, it would have been nice to avoid it, but I just, I don't trust it without the nails. So uh, nails it is, but uh, it should really be not noticeable uh, when, this is, when this is all done and, and finished.